Hello there. Ah, uh, yes, we are back. Back together again in the studio. Three guys before the game, episode number 423. This is our Wren Arrives Mountaineers Miss Musketeers episode. So the new AD is in, and the Mountaineers missed an opportunity in Cincinnati on Saturday night against uh, the team they call X. We'll get into all of that and more, plus text questions, comments, and thoughts. Our regular cast is assembled. The Dean is here. Hoppy did the third power. That's Hoppy, Hoppy, Hoppy. And the Senator with us as well, a.k.a. Spreads. What's up, fellas? Well, a lot going on. Oh, busy day, huh? You were the uh, master of ceremonies today at the introduction yeah. of the new athletics director. Good I job was. on your part. Yeah. Learn from you, Hop. Learn from you. Just realized I have my tie on. I don't need my tie on anymore. Yeah. New AD already dropped a pepperoni roll reference, so he he's did. done his research. First ever AD in the history, only 13 at WVU, first ever to uh, wear Jordans in his introductory press conference. That'll make news, won't it? Think that'll make news? Uh, no, it's kind of commonplace now. That's, that's cool. Really? I like that, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's like ADs? That's a thing, yeah. You have a young, hip, and cool. He break the Jordans out. I like it. I think that a lot more people now will start to do that. Like, I think it's a matter of time before Gordon Gee is rocking some Jordans mm. at events. What do you think? Would that be? I, yeah, I mean, that, that's been a thing. I know you don't necessarily pay attention to that stuff, but that, I mean, that's a thing. I don't see Gee doing it, though. You don't? No. You go more with a hush puppy on him, or what would you go with on him? I don't know. I mean, I guess I should look at his shoes. I mean, you're always. I mean, he's always very naturally dressed, though. So he is. Yeah. Anyway, cool. I did ask him. Just uh, I said over. Oh, I found out he was a. He's a gear guy. Likes gear. Swag guy. So when we sat down, I said uh, over under on number of pair of shoes that you have. Now we're talking about sneakers. Sneakers, shoes, right? Same thing. I said over under. I set the number at 40. What? I set the number at 40. He went over. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's over 40. Got over 40 pairs of I mean, shoes. How many pair of shoes do you have that you wear? Well, Hoppy, that. Help him over there. Help him. Well, I, I mean, I can't help him. I'm more on the Ren Baker side than I am. The I know. Hoppy Explain side. to him why people don't have the number of shoes. Hoppy, you're not on the farm anymore. It's not like you need a pair of pants and a pair of shoes to go milk the cows. People, that is a that's an item. That's a style thing that you get. Why do people have nine watches? They only have two wrists. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> now, Taylor. Yeah. So you got. You're wearing Nikes. Huh? Are Nikes or is it not? Uh, yeah, they're Nikes. No, they're Nikes. Awesome. Karen let you get Nikes. Karen let, Karen I don't let. think the swoosh is exactly right. <laughs> I think we better check the brand. <laughs> I bought them on the street. Put them up. Put them up again. Let me see if it's a real. You think it might be a fake Nike? It might be. Brad, check them. Is he faking it? Sweet mercy. Yeah, they might be fake. <laughs> 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 that, that, that actually might <laughs> <laughs> I got him at the sale rack at Dunham's. What you do were you on the street in New York City with the guy that has the big bag and you go into the bag and pull stuff out? Is that what that was? That's No, I got him. That was in the sale rack at Dunham's. <sighs> no, they're legit then. They're you Dunham's. see, the, the, Dr. Gee always wears two watches. Excuse me? Dr. Gee, today he had on two watches. Maybe, well, may, maybe yeah, one's a... No, but that makes some sense. I mean, he's heavily involved in the Big 12. So if mm -hmm. you're working on the Big 12, <laughs> you've got to have our time, our time on your, on your left, right, Eastern. And then you better have a Central Time watch because they don't translate it. That's right. So my guess is when they send out communications to the presidents, That's they stay point. in Central Time. And the one Eastern time zone president is probably right. tired of translating, just says, mm, I'm going to wear my other watch. So I just let he knows right wrist is Big 12 business, left wrist is everything else. Thank you, in all seriousness. <laughs> so he's going to call your mark and he has I to go. I think like, it's true. I think it's true because I heard 
unconfirmed. Well, you think it's true what I just said? Yes. That he's got a big 12 time zone watch Yes. On? And I tell you, I'll tell you why. I heard that there may have been a Zoom call or maybe more than one that the time got jagged up because they sent it to him as like central. But like, so he's going like, excuse me. Yeah. It happened to him. I was told. So he, that's why now the guy's going double, double watch. So it's not just us that has issues nah. with them not communicating. Plus his phone. He can probably, put, time probably put the phone at mountain time, right? <laughs> with BYU. Well, not right? yet. They're not officially in yet. Yeah, that's true too. But he's from Utah. So he keeps the home base. Well, he just time. naturally knows the mountain time zone. <laughs> just naturally reverts to that. Mountain time zone, completely underrated as a time zone. Everyone talks Eastern. Everyone talks Central. Everyone talks Pacific. That freaking mountain gets no love. What if you're, if you live in, I think it's Indiana that yeah. you know, is the Pieces state's divided. It. So you yeah. can like, over on the other side of town, it's a different time zone. Very mm-hmm. odd setup. Crazy. Remember when we stayed there when we went to play Notre Dame? Yeah, we got, where's We like bad. stayed in the Michigan Central, Walker. played in the Eastern. Yeah. Stayed, stayed in Central, went to dinner in the Eastern. Yeah, exactly. Big confusion <laughs> on what time we're meeting in the exactly lobby. Exactly right. I had no idea what we were, time we were meeting in the lobby. That. Yeah, I remember. Well, what yeah. do you mean? Like, should we just leave it on Eastern? <sighs> what the clock in my room says it's one time? No, I get it. <laughs> Tell you what, it was nice flying to Cincinnati this weekend and landing and not have your clock reset. That was like, that. seriously, I'm serious. I went like, hey, it's six, it's 610, and it's really 610. That was neat. That's that unusual. Was, that was different. That'll be the so, last time. New. The last time it happens this year. Then when is you go it? on, well, yeah, like next road, every road trip from here on in is central going forward. Gosh. You know, anyway. I think about two watches. <laughs> Hope, uh, ben Baker can get used to the time change. He's probably thrown off today. <laughs> President Key walking out there like one of them guys in New York City got nine watches up his arm. I like that. That's good. All right, boys. We should start doing that on this set. I'm going to start doing it during football season. <laughs> Big 12 release comes out. Just know to look at my right wrist. That's... <laughs> when this thing goes down next year and these four schools join, two of which will be in the Eastern Times, that'll be a great moment in three guys' history. It when, better not it, change the times. It better it just is. stay right like it is. No, it's going to change. It shouldn't. You don't get your full share right away. You shouldn't get time zones right away. <laughs> <laughs> We're over here 10 years later, still opining about no time zone change. Like nomads. So, Ren Baker was introduced as West Virginia's 13th athletic director earlier today. He spoke. Gordon Gee spoke. Q&A as well afterward. Bunch of topics chatted about. Hoppy Kerchival, initial reactions. Uh, a couple of things. I, I was doing my public affairs program when that was going on, so I wasn't able to watch it. So I went back and watched it just before we came down here. Um, you know, you, you said all the right things. Thought he was, I thought he was very tuned in to West Virginia and, and the Mountaineers. I, I think he said all the right things. I think he handled himself very, very well. What stood out to me was what was said, not only by, by him, but also by Guy about Neil Brown. And uh, Baker said, I'm going to get in the trenches with him and figure out what we need to do to eliminate hurdles for him, eliminate hurdles for him and provide resources for him. So that's the kind of thing you say when you want to help the coach be successful. You're not out there saying, well, we need to be better next year and we expect better results on the field. We expect that we're not up to where we expect. That was about... We have the guy we like. We just want to help him be more successful. And Gordon Gee said some similar things. He brought up the schedule, playing the you know two power fives in the non-conference. And Gee also said, few people have connected more clearly with West Virginia and with West Virginians than has Neil Brown. He came in and embraced us, and we are going to embrace each other now. Almost felt like Neil Brown was being introduced today as the as the new head football coach. There was a lot of positive vibe on Neil Brown. Now, I would just caution though that according to Shane Lyons, two weeks before he got whacked, he got a text from Gordon Gee saying, "I'm in the fo-, you know we're in the foxhole together." So things can change. But I just thought there was a lot of positive, feel good stuff about Neil Brown today at that news conference, Senator. Uh, I thought it was fine. I thought he did a nice job with it. I thought he was he he hit the right notes in his speech. I thought just his demeanor was relaxed and comfortable and did seem happy to be here. Didn't seem like that was forced. Sometimes you do see that. I, I thought it was 
I thought he did a nice job with it. I, I'm not reading too much into those comments, though, because I thought I thought Ren's comments about the football coach are exactly from page one of the AD manual, what you say when you take that position. That's that's what the AD's job is to do, remove hurdles, remove challenges. How can I assist you? That's that's exactly what he should say to Neil Brown. Because here's the thing, guys. He he is tied to Neil Brown, at least through next season, right? His, his performance nationally, Ren's, largely rests on how the success of the football program does. We've talked about that going back to Shane Lyon. Those two positions are linked. Whether you made the hire or didn't make the hire, they're linked. So that's what Ren Baker should have said today, that he's willing to work with Shane Lyons and, and see what they can do together. Uh, so, Neil Brown. Uh, what did I say? Shane Lyons. Work with Neil Brown. Correct. Here's what Ren Baker said about the Mountaineer football program and assessing it. I think you get in and build a relationship, work every day in the trenches. I, I think having coached, there's not very many ADs left that's that's had a, any kind of uh, coaching experience. I think that helps me. I think I understand how coaches think a little bit, understand how to communicate with them, understand uh, when they need to feel support, that there's a time place to uh, have conversations. I look forward to getting in and, and really working with Coach Brown and learning everything I can about the football program. And, and uh, I'm confident we can together figure out where we need to go. So they met face to face for the first time last night. Mm. Kind of wild that last night was the first time he was on campus. So you walk in the building, and it goes like, okay, this is the building. These are the facilities. And he did tell me earlier today that he had a two hour Zoom call with Neil last week. Two hours? Two hours. Wow. So they pay the full premium rate. You know, the normal for the free thing on Zoom is 40 minutes. But you got to get the, right, Brad? On that deal, you got to get, you got to have the enterprise, I think. So you think that's weird that he hadn't visited? No, it yeah. happens. Ten years ago, that would have been the case. But I mean, the new days no. of the transfer portal, I mean, you don't need to visit. You just, <laughs> just come no. where you're going. He did say that Mac Rhodes, the AD at Baylor, strongly encouraged him to do this. And Joe Castiglione, yes. the director of athletics at Oklahoma, also um, said yes. And he mentioned to me that Castiglione also filled him in on really good Italian restaurants in north central West Virginia that he's founded, which is significant as well. Here's Ren Baker on his first conversation with Neil Brown. Great. It was better than the first time I, I shook hands with him because Troy was beating North Texas in the New Orleans Bowl the uh, first time I met Coach Brown. He's been great. We've had several conversations. Um, I look forward to getting here and, and working with Coach Brown and, and uh, doing a thorough assessment of the program so we can determine, hey, what do we need? Where are our gaps? What hurdles can I eliminate? What resources do we need to go and procure? Because the football program is obviously important to the university and, and to the state. And uh, Coach Brown knows that. He wants to, to give WVU and the state of West Virginia the kind of program that uh, all fans will be proud of. So I'm excited to join him, lock arms with him, get in the trenches with him, and figure out what we need to do to, uh, to eliminate hurdles for him and provide resources for him. There you go. It was interesting. To, of course, the NIL question uh, came up. And two points to that, that it was – I don't know how much we knew that Oliver Luck was involved, but he was clearly very heavily involved. And Gordon Gee just said, when so-and-so and Oliver and I talked with, interviewed them, so Oliver Luck was directly involved in the interviews of the, uh, of the candidates. And then ask about NIL. Maybe I, I shouldn't read this if you have these things. Well, these yeah, I, I can hit it. What, do you want to go NIL? Yeah. We can do that. Okay. We can do that. Let's talk. Uh, here's... Ren Baker on his relationship with Country Roads Trust, yes. which obviously is the the vessel for NIL dollars. I've known Oliver for a long time. We haven't spent a lot of time together, but he's somebody in the industry that just certainly has a name and reputation and, and that I've connected with over time. I've had a chance to talk to the rest of the staff there at uh, Country Roads Trust. I see them as an asset and a, and a tool and somebody we need to have a, you know, have a relationship with. Not one that violates the rules, but one that is healthy and, and, uh, and does everything it can to provide those opportunities for student athletes within the rules. In Texas, we actually have a state law, so I could not have done that video uh, in Texas. I suspect that state law will uh, get repealed this, this session. So I am supportive to the extent that I can be uh, with the collective there at North Texas as well. It's probably just like here, it's a lot of the same donors and individuals. And what I think is important is that everybody recognizes and knows that the MAC is important, 
Other projects we're doing is important. Other areas of the university is important. But those NIL opportunities are important. It's something that, that we need all of Mountaineer Nation to, to embrace. So that's, that's sort of dancing on a pinhead there too, right, is that protecting the MAC, but the NIL is important, and we're going to work with the NIL to the extent that we can. Don't want to violate the rules, but you have to have NIL. I mean, that's – I guess that is what you say, and, and I go back to what Shane Lyons said where, where when he had discussions with Country Roads, it was, there was a line I wasn't going to cross. So is there a new line now? What is, what is uh, Ren Baker's line? So I don't know. That's, that's something they got to work out. That's the question moving forward. So what you know so far, first of all, that's, that's the right and perfect answer for that question. On your day one as a job, that's how you answer that. Because you don't have to give any more details. You don't have to give specifics. You answer it. You show the understanding and you move forward. So we answered that correctly, in my opinion, exactly as you should. The next part, and we already know this, and we've seen this change already. The first thing that the trust needed, in my opinion, was a jump start, a shock to their brand. That, that brand for how important it is and what that entity is supposed to do was largely largely quiet since it's come into place. You, you don't really see much about it. You don't see much ads. If you're not really on Twitter or social, you probably may not know anything about it. I just thought the branding needed a jump start from Country Roads Trust. I do think athletics starting with Rob Alsop and now moving into Ren and some of these videos you've seen with him. Bob Huggins has done a video, Nikki Izzo Brown. So some of the branding is increased and that's step one. So you've got to increase. If you want people to give to it, they've got to know that it's out there and what it is. I think there's been a concerted effort from athletics to help elevate the Country Roads Trust brand, which it was going to struggle to do on its own. It needed to come through athletics to get that. And you can do that. You can, as athletics, promote the brand. The next wave of this will be how do the Mac and Ren Baker work in conjunction with raising actual dollars? And that's the part that you won't know initially. You won't know until some of those guys are out actually raising funds how that crossover may or may not work. Exactly. And there has been more mention and more discussion of the Country Roads Trust in the last two and a half to three weeks than there has in the last since it was created. Since it was created, correct. Correct. And that's stage one. That's what that trust needed. Yeah. It's hard to get people to donate to your cause if you're not quite exactly sure what it is or you just don't hear about it consistently. And I think that's where athletics has taken that baton and said, here, we can help you promote your brand and make you more visible. That's clearly been one of the uh, line items that's on the new agenda moving forward because yes. it's been evident before Ren Baker even touched down in this state. More Ren Baker. Why did he choose? W-V-U. I love the role the university plays for the state and the people. I love its roots as a land-grant institution. I love that we're nationally known for providing an elite education as evidenced by our R1 research rating and many other rankings while providing access for all West Virginians. Heather and I are both first-generation college graduates, and so we understand firsthand the power of a quality education and what it does for your family. I love the passion that this entire state has for the Mountaineers. It is special and unique and something I'm excited to be a part of and I will not take for granted. And the Morgantown community, everyone I talked to that's lived here, spent time here, visited here, said what a great place it is to raise a family and certainly for Heather and I, that's important. And I love our tremendous student athletes and coaches who wear the gold and blue with pride. I mean, he checks a lot of boxes. I mean, clearly he, he was prepped. He's prepped. So he said a lot of things that connect with West Virginians, which is important. I mean, West Virginians, you know how it is in West Virginia. You know, if you, if you don't get us, then, then you, you got problems. So, you know, so I, <laughs> you I, don't get us, we ain't getting you. You know, he didn't say University of West Virginia or blue no. and gold. I mean, he came in and, and, and was well prepared for that. And that starts him off day one, at least on the right foot. So one of the things you do when you're, a, when you're an administrator is you're constantly looking. So let's start with this. There's only 60 some of these jobs at the Power Five level. And there's even fewer that he said the right word, their passion, where there's the amount of caring about your sports programs that exists from West Virginians and West Virginia fans. Not every place has that. So there's 65 of these jobs, 65-ish. You take a bunch off the table because they either don't care, they can't care, 
or their caring is split between multiple institutions. Right. Now we're down to a really small list. So right. you wonder why did Ren Baker take the job? That's that's first and foremost. Top 20 in wins, there, football, basketball. There aren't many like this with right. all of the things. Then the other part you do when you're an administrator and you're going from place to place and you're climbing the ladder and you're looking at different things, you're, you're looking for connections to all those different places because someday you may come back. And had he taken a job in the state of Oklahoma or at Missouri or any of those places and he could stand up and say, I'm home. I'm glad to be home, right? So those are some of the connections. But this one was a smart tie, if you listen to what he said and know his background, from a small rural area. And he weaved that in to his in, in introduction speech today, right? So when you look at all of the stuff we just said, one of a few jobs that care like this, not many of these jobs to begin with, and then you look at roots, he could build the story of why this fit him. Right. And I think that's part of the story too, even though he has no connection to West Virginia, but there's some similarities. And so it's not just the school looking at him, it's him. He's looking at different places. Where can I go that's a fit? Similar to what Neil Brown did too, right? Neil Brown didn't have any connections, but there were enough similarities from where he had been and where he was from that he said fit. So that fit we talk about a lot, Hoppy, with coaches, how important it is, that's important for administrators I as mean, well. I mean, you would not see him at Rutgers. Probably not. Right. For a lot of reasons. Yeah, for a lot of not. reasons. But With I mean, all due respect. But, 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 you know, so, yeah, I mean, he really, he really sold it today as, as a good fit. Three Guys Before the Game is brought to us by the Burdett Camping Center, the only warranty forever RV dealer in all of West Virginia. You can visit them at BurdettCamping.com. I mean, Burdett Camping gets rural. I mean, Ren Baker, he gets growing up rural, right? Town 800. He'll probably live in one of those campers till he gets a place here. It's a possibility. It has probably not been ruled out. You heard what I said, that the warranty lasts forever when you buy something from Burdett Camping. As long as you own that vehicle, the warranty is forever, and they happen to be the only dealer in the state of West Virginia that offers that. You can visit them at BurdettCamping.com. That's B-U-R-D-E-T-T-E Camping.com. BurdettCamping.com. Three guys also brought to us by Comax Business Systems, your full-service Konica Minolta dealer. Go to Comax Business Systems at ComaxWV.com. Talk about winning. Ren Baker talked a lot about winning today, wants to win. That's the whole thing. Comax Business Systems has won the Elite Dealer by ENX Magazine 10 times. 10 times. No other dealer in the state of West Virginia has ever won the award once. They've won it. 10 times. As I said, they're the Boston Celtics or, or, of, uh, of ENX Wooden, Magazine. John Wooden. Yeah, they're, they're UCLA. Yeah. So they will manage your IT. Are you safe there? Are you safe? Really, really safe? You feel good about your data? You good? Manage. They can manage your IT, manage your voice. They can manage your phone. Take all of your worries and set them aside. Visit Comax Business Systems at ComaxWV.com. Talk to a guy today. Over at the luncheon, three guys listener told me he called Comax because he heard us, you know, the fine sponsors, Comax. And I said, did you mention three guys? He said, I did. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So that's how it works. Yeah, that's, a, that's exactly how it works. Right. So if you need that world of managing IT, managing voice, you don't need to hire someone full time, have them put their feet up on a desk, just sit around. You can just manage that 24-7. Have that out of your head. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see everybody. So that's that for now. And I want to ask you this. This was your world. You lived this world for more than two decades. When you see a transition take place, and you've seen many of them, you may have been involved in transitions. Mm -hmm, I was. So normally, like, what are what's the evolution of a transition once the new athletic director takes over? Well, I think the first part is you just you you have to take some direction from his or her on how things are going to operate because they've been operating a certain way for a number of years, and and people are used to that, and there's some there's some continuity and consistency to that. And now that's all upended because you don't know. And much like everybody's sitting around asking questions, internally you're asking those same questions on, okay, how often do I pop up an update? Is he going to ask me for an update? Do I take him an update? So everything down from the granular, that stuff, really inside baseball, to external stuff. How much do I keep doing what I was doing? Is there going to be a meeting in the in the first 48 hours, in the first week? How does, how does it manage? So there's, 
these staffs are really large now. You know, they're a lot larger than they've ever been. And that's not just a football staff or a coaching staff. That's an administrative staff too. There's a bunch of moving parts and moving pieces. So that's why we always talk about this job. He's going to be mostly under the microscope for what happens at football. But there's a whole world of internal people, hundreds of people that now have their daily lives upended because there's a new boss and you got to see how that boss reacts and what he's interested in and looking for from you. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a big period of transition for everybody. He said something interesting about, about that because he said he coached some. And when you coach, sometimes even if you lose, people say, well, good effort, coach, good job, something like that. He said, as an AD, you find people come to see you, either they, A, want something, B, want to complain. He said, yeah. but I'm used to that. He said, I've, I've, I've dealt with that. I'm comfortable with that. So you're going to deal with a lot of that too. And this is also one of those positions that your best day is your first day in regard to critics. Yes. School presidents are a lot like that. Coaches are like that. Athletic directors are like that. So like the slate starts off today, like complete white slip of paper. Everything is good. And then the first thing that happens are like, well, now actually you can't park your car there anymore. Now we're going to move that space over to here. And like, there's one. And then, uh, by the way, uh, no, the, now the popcorn, uh, now it's going to be two for one instead of uh, three. There's another mark. And then before you know what happens, the page starts to get a bunch of dots on it and be like, that guy took my spot. <laughs> well, you had to, that happens. It's just it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when change is made. Yeah, and, and I think there, I mean, there's changes coming, right? I mean, Gordon Geese talked about that. The whole reason there's a new person in that chair is because the university, Gordon Geese specifically, wanted some changes. So those changes are going to trickle all the way down. Those a are different gonna, direction. Those are going to happen for people internally, staff members. Those are going to happen for MAC donors. Things are going to look different there. Season ticket holders may have a different look. Prices may change. So there, there's right now, it's one of those where everything's written on a whiteboard. Everything that you've known is on a whiteboard. Some things may not change. May come in and say, no, like that, like that. But there's certainly some changes coming for every aspect that touches the athletic department. Uh, transfer portal opens. Huh. Oh. Ding, 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 Has ding, it ding. ever. Eight hundred. Pitt, Pitt's already. This affects West Virginia because West Virginia plays Pitt next year. Pitt has already lost a quarterback and replaced him, and the thing's <laughs> been open for thirty-six minutes and counting. Same day service, huh? Keaton Slovis out. Phil Jerkovic in. Uh, former BC, BC quarterback that was Notre, Notre Dame, Dame that worked with uh, Signetti before. So West Virginia will not face Keaton Slovis next year, but we'll get Phil Jerkovic. Where's Slovis going? Uh, undetermined at this point. Does That's someone, just one. I mean, there's oh, yeah. there's a million. The Pac-12's leading receiver out of Arizona, he's in the portal. Alabama's Alabama's starting lineman. Yeah. Right. So this this is, and and the point here isn't so much for West Virginia fans about who's in it right now. It's just simply what we said. There sometimes there's not rhyme or reason. You're starting offensive lineman for Alabama. Outside world thinks we well, got that pretty good, man. He's gone in the portal. So that's when you're Neil Brown and you're that coaching staff. That that's what we keep saying. There, there has never been more talent available to you than there is at this time. You've got to go get it. You've got to recruit it. It's a hard process, but there has never been more talent available. Yeah, and uh, Ren Baker said on a couple of occasions today, so much of this is about, and we've talked about this, it's, it's retention of your current student athletes, right? You got to do a great job. Now, some of them you don't mind if they leave. Because it opens up an opportunity for someone that's probably not going to fulfill what you would hope for them. But, yeah, it's about play retention. Someone hit me with this one. This was at 1223, so a little more than an hour ago. Over 800 players are already in the portal. And interesting fact, last year, 28% of the players in the portal, only 28% found a new home. Really? That's what it said. North, only, Ca North, North Carolina State quarterback Devin Leary. Yeah. Multi-year starter, he's out. Graham Mertz, Wisconsin, yeah. former five-star yeah. recruit, yeah. yeah. three-year starter, he's out. And maybe the most high-profile one, you talk about something that's going to be fascinating to watch. Deion Sanders hired at Colorado over the weekend. And he they put his entire I watched it, dude. first team meeting out there on video, Hobby. and it, I was riveted. <laughs> I watched the whole 14 minutes. Unbelievable. Riveted. This is going to be the most fascinating case study. You talk about a new world. And Dion's as, as perfect of a figure to straddle old world to new world. He's an old dude, right? He played a long time ago. 
And those of us of a certain age will always think of not just Atlanta Falcons and Dallas Cowboys primetime, but the Florida, Florida State, State stuff, right? There's a, that's branded in my head forever. And now he's, now he's an, a coach, but he's, man, you got to talk about a cool factor. And you talk about a dude, I'm not sure who owns a room better than Deion Sanders when he walks in. But go, it's out on YouTube. Go watch this video. He, the thing starts, he enters the meeting room as if he's a championship boxer coming to the ring. There, he's got an entourage that's like in, in vertical V <laughs> formation behind him. There's, there's things happening. There's filming. There's music. He's walking and not acknowledging any of the chaos around him. And he enters the room and takes over. And he didn't just acknowledge the transfer portal. He flat said to these guys, y'all better get in the portal. He said, because I'm coming. I'm coming and I'm bringing my own luggage. Meaning he, he introduced the Jackson, the Jackson State starting quarterback. Who's right. his son. His son. Is is, now. Is now, he said, here's your quarterback. Introduced him. I mean, it was an unbelievable team meeting. Here's and you talk about a different world. You talk about a different world. And this is, this is the give and take of the portal and the NIL. Is, is we talked about the, the pendulum of leverage swung from, from coaches and schools way over here swung back to players well we wondered how the coaches were going to take some control of that and some of that control comes in what Deion Sanders was saying like listen you you guys weren't any good collectively <laughs> we're, we're not doing that this is going to change and y'all might want to enter the portal wow. it, it's a fa- it's it's going to be a fascinating case study in non-traditional sticking him at a big place and seeing what he can do uh, he's gonna get players hoppy He's going to get players. So it's 22 hours old on YouTube. 1.8 million views. 1.8 million views. Now, do you think Colorado was looking to make a spark? It's been dissed on. They're 1 and 11 this season. I just, I'm just for he re- Hold real quick. He references in there that people haven't, haven't cared about Colorado football in two decades. Might be longer. Might be closer to three decades. And they're the st- I, I think they're the, the story. Eric Bieniemy. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And Salonisi. Darian Hagan. Cordell going, Stewart. Uh, Mike Pritchard. <laughs> Rashan Salam. Um, I'm just going to pull up a little bit of this. I have okay. no idea where this thing falls, but just like, let's hear a little bit of his rap here. Really? An opportunity to do that, but you got to believe. It's the spirit around this uh, team, around this school, that is not traditional. In some kind of way, you guys have accepted it and you've begun to be complacent with it. And even some of the guys that aren't here that's supposed to be here, those are the ones. All this gonna stop. I still have unfinished business to do at Jackson State because whatever I start, I'm gonna finish. And we gotta go win this championship. We gonna do that. But then shortly thereafter, I just want you to know I'm coming. Not to compete, but to win. Not to show up, but to show out. Not to be amongst the rest, but to be the best. I'm coming. I'm flat out coming. This is real. This ain't no ESPN or this ain't one of the networks you just happen to see on. I'm right in front of you. You know why? Because I'm coming. I'm coming to restore, to replace, to re-energize some of y'all that are salvageable. I'm not gonna lie, everybody that's sitting in front of the seat ain't gonna have a seat when we get back. But I'm coming. Uh, I started and we're gonna go dominate and we're gonna work. I'm coming to work and not to play. I'm coming to kill it and not to kick it. I'm coming. So you gotta understand, so when I get back, ain't gonna be no hats and no memes, there ain't gonna be no hoodies on and no memes, there ain't gonna be no phones. I wish you would bring a phone in my meeting. It ain't going to be no earring in the meeting. Everybody's going to look like everybody. I'm coming. It's going to be a different place, a different feel, a different attitude, a different energy, a different work ethic, a different want, a different hunger, a different desire, a different need, a different capacity. It's going to be a different reach. I'm coming. See, by now you better feel it. You can feel what I'm saying. You can feel where I'm coming from. And you know I ain't playing because I got the credentials to back it up. I'm coming. And you're going to hear me because it's going to be little silent little footsteps that you don't even have to strain. But you're going to know I'm coming. Just a second. <laughs> it's amazing. See that line right there? He said, he, he, 
basically you're going to listen because I, I got the credentials. I thought that was a strong mm-hmm. line. Here's the other thing. I, I don't think he had notes. I mean, he's just going. If you listen riffing. to him at any of his stuff. Some, I think he had some bullet points. He goes, well, he, he, he re-energized, he looked down, but he didn't carry anything no, in no, there with any with notes. It. That was football coach, and that was preacher. preacher. Yeah. And, yeah, it's going, to be a, it's going to be a magnificent case study to see if he can pull this off. Let me give you a, a 180 on that, a different perspective. Sure, Hop, go ahead. And that is I interviewed Charles Huff today, the head coach at Marshall, because they just got announced they're going to the Myrtle Beach to play in the bowl game. Uh, to play UConn, and I asked him about the portal, and he said one of, one of the things they have to do as well is, you know, re-recruit players, make sure that they stay, and also to try to convince players that it's n- it's not necessarily the grass isn't always greener, that if when they go someplace else, a coach is still going to be on their butts, they're still going to have to practice, there's still going to be bad days that they have to deal with, there's still going to be losses. And I thought that was – and maybe that, that's, that's the opposite of Deion Sanders, but also that's a reality. That's a reality. If, if, if a young person thinks they're going to go somewhere and it's always going to be better, it may not be. Now, they have the option to go, but it may not be better. Well, and they're going to have a lot of the same issues. Sure. If they have issues at place A, they might have issues at place B and place but that's C. that's one of the all-time great you're – not, you're not talking to me. I mean, you're talking to Tony about that. I, I know. I mean, I'm not going to have that problem. I know. I mean, you're you're talking to him. You're oh, talking, I see. You're not yeah. talking to me, right? You're talking to him about those things. Oh, yeah. So that's that's they, the they challenge. don't hear that. They don't hear it. All, okay. all due respect to Coach Huff, and and I mean literally all due respect, not our joking way. That that's what coaches should say, and and they're doing that, right? They're constantly trying to talk to those guys, and sometimes it gets through, but a lot of times it just doesn't because the guys don't want to listen to them. Right. You know, they just think they already have the answer and they're gone. That's why we see the portal doing what it's doing. Yep. Um, and I'm sorry, and, Dion, and that's the opposite approach. That's the, it's easy to do that on a program that's been that bad, but that's the opposite approach is, uh, I mean, I don't know that I want any of you. I'll start the whole damn thing over. Here we that's go. That's what he said. Yeah. He, he said in this thing, Hoppy, I'm going to, he goes, what's off season going to look like? He goes, my goal is to make you quit. That's my object. My object is to make you quit. That's what I'd like to do. And if you, if you last, then you'll be fine. Then you'll be able to play. But I don't want anyone here that doesn't want to be here. I mean, basically, he pulled a Don Neal and get your feet off the uh, get your feet off the chair when Don Neal first took over his first meeting at Towers. Well, guys had their feet on the chair, so he told these guys no earrings, no hats, no phones. Put it all down. Well, look, they're terrible. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you got to. I think he's right to start from the basics because they're terrible. What are you going to come in and go? Listen, these young men are very close to being successful. We just have to. No. Nah, won- it's, I'm just saying it's going to be fascinating to watch because that's a program that's been largely irrelevant for three decades. They are now clearly relevant, and they're going to get dudes in there. What do we always say? It's about players. And he listen, at Jackson State, think of what he's done there. He, he not only got the – I mean, his son's really good quarterback. That helps. But he got the number one recruit in the country. Got him to flip from Florida State to go to Jackson State. You don't think he's going to get kids to Colorado? That's number one. And then what did he do on top of that? He won. He's won games. He's like 21 and two. So there's results backing up the recruiting. It's a, it's a heck of a gutsy hire by that AD because it's, it's really non-traditional. There's not a proven track record. And you've basically, here's what you're doing when you hire Dion. You just say, go ahead. Exactly. Like yeah. Like, like, go ahead, man. Just don't, I'm either going to ride or get fired with you. You, you just go. Exactly. Cause you aren't managing prime. You're not managing that. I saw, I heard some Bobby Bowden when he first took to that podium yesterday. Because, right, I mean, he got four years of Bobby Bowden. And I heard a little, okay, here we go. A little bit of that. There's a little bit of that. You know what else there's a little bit of? Oh, yeah, there it is. Uh, I got another Scopes yell at the game on uh, Saturday. You what? Say that again. Cincinnati? Cincinnati. Some guy gave me a scopes. Scopes! <laughs> I got a response for him when I hear that now. I ID, I ID them, then I give them. <laughs> it's a code. It's good. Except it might get you cuffed and stuffed. <laughs> met, a, uh, met a nice listener myself this weekend, Super Six. Oh, really? Randy Hunt. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Independence. Yeah. Stop by. Stop yeah. by the booth, in fact. We had a nice chat. I turned the game His on team, there. Yeah, they're pretty good, huh? What's that, who? Independence. Independence. 
Oh, yeah, I think so. Judah Price. Judah nice Price. Night. What do you have? 6,000 yards? Lined up 376 on the ground. Super wow. six. All class record for Judah Price. By the way, in the, in the AAA, which I was watching, you guys did a great job, that props to Dan Lohman because you had replay on that fumble. And I know he's got limited cameras, but he had replay and also had a camera in where the officials were looking sure. at it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That was a nice touch. That's that was well done. He also at one point went quad box on the replay. I don't know if you saw that one or not. Oh, yeah, I, oh, yeah, I saw that. Went a quad box on the replay there. I saw that. And the, re- and the replay, level production. replay showed the knee was down. Mm-hmm. Well how done. Many, I watched Friday a teeny little bit, and they went into the booth. How many how many replays did they go? Did you do in the three games? I lose track because it kind of runs together. Each coach gets two. There were there were quite a few. I mean, there was every bit of five or six over the okay. course of the three games. Man, who was the the coach of who was the coach of um, the coach of Huntington? Yeah, Billy Sales threw the red marker fly, marker on the field before the kid had run. Yeah, right? no, that was Nathan Tanner for Parkersburg South. Had oh it yeah, it marks parts. It was the really yeah, good. So yeah, we we had some good. That's always one thing we like to watch is how far they throw the challenge flag. John Cole from Bridgeport holds the record first year <laughs> replay. My man John Cole, he he wound up like arm was back on the ground and he let it fly. It was a good motion. Yeah, the play wasn't Nathan over. Nathan Tanner, Nathan Tanner has the thing, and I I mean yeah, the the, the Huntington play was, player was still not in the end zone, and they throwing that thing out. So we had the quickest challenge in yeah. Super Six. Was he right unofficially? Yeah. Uh, I think the, that the, one was right. One the yeah, because that got, one. Yeah, that they was, said they at first they called it a touchdown, but then they reversed it. Brad, I'm surprised you didn't complain about the length of time because they took a long time, but they got it right. Got it right. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Text number one of the day, guys. Three exclamation points. Monday's podcast episode four two one. You promised details on Thursday. For the Apothecary L House Hoppy 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 Kerchavale unveiling party. Here it is, Thursday. We just anxiously listened to episode 422 for said details. And what the frack? Is there going to be a Hoppy insurrection at the L House on Jan 6 or not? Can we buy tickets in advance? Or do we need to bring a tent and camp out on the sidewalk like it was a 1975 <laughs> Pink Floyd concert? We've been fans since episode one and are looking forward to knocking back a few Coca-Colas with the boys. We'll probably stay in Morgantown and watch the Kansas game the following night. I don't get Mama Pat out of the holler here in southwestern Kanawha County very often, except for when the railroad pension check hits the bank. We're just waiting to make some plans. Love you guys, and I love the show. Steve and Pat in Tornado, West Virginia. Hello! Excellent text. First of all, that's your fault. So where are the details? That's your fault. What I tried to tell you two episodes ago, just hold on and just wait till you had the details before you start talking about this thing, and then you could put the details out, and you wouldn't stop, and you wouldn't listen, and you went ahead. So Hoppy and I aren't owning that email. You own that from Steve and Pat. Steve and Pat, we apologize on Tony's behalf. Dear that's Steve it. and Pat, <laughs> in my anxious anticipation for our event on January the 6th, I may have... <laughs> overreached by a few steps regarding the ticket allocation and the subsequent event. However, we continue to move forward in a very positive direction toward this event, which will in fact take place on the 6th of January, 20 and 23 at the Apothecary Ale House. We are finalizing our plans for ticket distribution, which will take place on a website. There will be a limited number of tickets. There will be 50 of those. We will on this format, give you the exact time when said tickets will go on sale. Again, I'm so sorry that this happened, but I am hopeful that we will have final details on our next episode as to when they will be available. Thank you for being a three guys listener. You did, you did it again, though. We might not have them next episode either. Well, no, this is going to put the push on to get the thing done. Hey, three guys, Andy from Hurricane here. Just got done listening to episode 421. I find it very interesting that you guys brought up how easy us insurance guys have it. That could be correct in some degree. Ironically, it was a sport. I was a sports communications major in college. I did play-by-play, football, basketball, baseball, volleyball. Now, look at me. I got an easy 9-to-5 insurance agent job. I guess it does have, have its benefits. It allows me to travel around umpiring college baseball in the spring, 
<laughs> reffing football in the fall at local high schools and yelling, hoppy, hoppy, hoppy every time there's a first down. But I got to say, I envy you guys as well. You do a remarkable job. Can't wait to see the new beer. <laughs> Keep up the excellent work. There's heavy beer anticipation. I hope this thing works out. <laughs> Will from Richmond, dislocated from Somersville into Wahoo country. I recently discovered three guys on YouTube. And I torture now, I now torture my wife two evenings a week. Longtime podcast listener, recent YouTube watcher. I love the show. Feels like I'm shooting the breeze back home in West Virginia every time I listen. Look at that setup he's got. Ooh. Oh, nice. There we go. Right? I However, like that. yeah. Nice piece of furniture there. Got the fireplace going. I mean, he got the YouTubes on. Nice backlit built ins there. That's really nice. However, more spouse animus there. Yeah, more, yeah, more. Yeah, yeah the wife hates us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nothing new. What's her, Sorry. Uh, hey, Will, Sorry, tell Will. your wife um, we're really good guys. If she got to know us, she'd probably like us maybe a little bit. Maybe. Text her. Love the show. It always makes me laugh. I would love to send you all some of my wife's world-famous peanut butter fudge if no one has allergies. Obviously, my opinion biased. I believe it would be great to go with a cup Ooh. of coffee that you sneak on the show without prior, <laughs> prior approval of your co-hosts. And I they, brought one in. And they Where's your share? coffee? I brought, I brought one in today. I stole this over at football. Why'd you only go a little one? This too is late the, in the day to go too big? No, second one. So Hugs was waiting for the press conference to start today. I said, hey, Hugs, you want a coffee? <laughs> he said, yeah. So I said, here. So we walked from the team room, went back into the, the, the food deal there. And I said, they got, they got themselves a Starbucks machine here. Uh-oh. I said, you want it? How you want it? He goes, T, I'll take it any way you're getting it. I said, okay, fine. So I make him a nice veranda light roast, right? He puts a little thing in there. And then he said, I don't think this AD is going to like me. I said, well, why is that, Hugs? He said, first yep. thing I'm asking for is a Starbucks yep. machine over at basketball. No question. Yep. There you go. No Absolutely. Question. There it is. Yep. No question. Hey, why not? Ren, welcome Ren. in. Listen, I need, hey, uh, listen, I need a coffee. I need, I need a coffee. I need that same Stat. Starbucks machine. Mm -hmm. They got three different beans in that machine over at football. You can go three different beans. Whatever way you want to go. I've asked you, what's the, what's the syrup situation? No syrup. None? I got some creamers that you can put in there, but no syrups. Athletes. Can't we get all the sugar in them? I love the show. Always makes me laugh. I would like to send you all, oh, uh, yeah, world fame. Oh, there you go. Coffee. Okay, you guys are great. Would like some fudge. Please let me know where to ship it. Do we want that? Sure. Michael and Culloden. Sure. Hello. Okay. Taylor, make a note. We need to resend back to Michael and Culloden. This person sent four texts in intervals of about two to three minutes. He must have been listening to the last show, and while he was listening, he would just send a text. Like and live then send texting? Te he was like live texting while listening to a recorded show, and it went like this. Okay. You preach on it, Scopes. It's always about the money. Then the next one was, hey, what was that movie? Then the next one was The Accountant. Then it the was- The Affleck movie? I don't know. And oh. that is. How'd you know that? You don't watch movies. He's got the same See, beard I guy. Just, I just save it up here, Hoppy. You think I don't know what I'm talking? Just save it. And up. his last one was: if you Drop really want to see Hoppy flip out, tell him COVID was fake news. <laughs> 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 Texter from Ben in San Francisco. We continue to broaden oh our reach out in the West Coast. No disrespect to Rutgers <laughs> or the previous 421 episodes. However. Episode 422 was my personal favorite of all time. Really? Holy cow. I don't even know From the tremendous 25-minute <laughs> open to highlight our power rankings and follow me, Junior, and here comes a heater, the three guys just provided the perfect content. Have the happiest holidays and cheers to 422 more. That ain't happening. Won't work. Won't Thank you, there. Ben in San Francisco. Thank you, Ben. Not we appreciate you listening. Ben. Not making it to 800, but thank you, Ben. <laughs> Hey, three guys, can we have a new segment where a microphone is secretly placed in Hoppy's office to capture his angry rants that Tony hears from another room? I'd love that. Don't tell Hoppy, though. And if you read this on the air, tell Hoppy that you've already got about four <laughs> hours worth of rants recorded. If he tries to leave through the transfer portal, you're going to release them to the public. Signed, J.D. from the Southern Coalfields. Well, Hoppy, this next one might hurt you. Gentlemen, is there any truth to the rumor that Pete Thamel Iced Ale will be launched minutes before the release of your <laughs> beloved Dean's Brew. <laughs> that was pretty good. No doubt. Oh, 
boy. No doubt. That would really bum you out if Thamel came in. What if Thamel What's runs into or? the apothecary yeah. alehouse right before they're getting ready to pull the pull the tap back on Hoppy? And Thamel says, "I got the first one. It's my beer." Yeah, I was gonna say that. Or there's there's it's likely Thamel will be in the apocalypse there with the <laughs> with a shot of the kegs coming in and the label. <laughs> he'll release the label before yeah. we will. He'll have the he'll, he'll scoop us all. First reported by Brett McMurphy. <laughs> Hey, three guys, I just finished the highlighter episode, and I agree, yellow's number one choice. Three things. First, there is a distinct difference between reasons and excuses. Second, in my opinion, for Neil to stay beyond next year, he will need to retain out current talent to a reasonable degree and show improvement in the win column. Third, are there any early candidates for Brad's replacement now that he's a shoe in for the North Texas AD job? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for all you do. Looking forward to buying me a Dean Stein cooler. <laughs> Hey, three guys, long-time listener, first-time text. Just finished episode 422, and I have to say, after the week I had, I needed that good laugh that you provided. I know I'm on the minor minority with this take, but keeping Neil was the right move. I just wish they would have announced it sooner. Serious question here, though. What is the likelihood that Rodney Gallagher flips to Penn State? Just hope somehow he decides to stay a Mountaineer. Thanks for all you guys do. Keep up the good work. I'm looking forward to the first drink of Kerchival. Lonnie from Chapmanville. You know, that could have got botched. Excuse me? That Gallagher thing could have got botched there with the timing of this and the way there was the, the no, just no word for X number of days, however long that was. I think he's probably okay. I think you're, I think you're good there. I mean, he seemed to, he seemed to indicate that when he was interviewed after the basketball exhibition game. I think you're okay. I can, the, people keep referring to the last episodes being funny. I, I don't, I mean, I don't even remember. Do you? I don't either. Highlighter, I remember. I thought that was cute. And also, here comes the heater. I remember. Heater that. was a great line. Heater was a great line. But what it was in what was it in reference to? It was some guy who said, "With all due respect, I love the show." And then <laughs> oh, you, and he was getting us, he was getting us ready to, to come down with some high heat. How come nobody ever texts and says, "You know, you guys had great insight on that coaching situation." Nobody <laughs> ever says it's that. It's always about highlighters and beer and <laughs> bores. From Jim in Charleston, I'd like your thoughts on something that's occurred to me. Given the fact that few players make major contributions as freshmen, how easy it is for players to switch schools. Should colleges stop worrying about recruiting high schoolers and just spend all their time scouting other teams and filling their rosters with portal players? It seems like a lot of effort to recruit and coach up a player as freshman and sophomore years only to see him leave once he's got some success and shows his potential. So you're certainly not the first to bring that point up. I think time will tell how that evolves i'm not ruling that out but i think we have to have a period of time to go by to see exactly how many percent do depart and then once we reach a point of kids going wait a second that wasn't a good move to depart does that lessen so i think a lot of it is how to many, be determined how many Emmett matthews do you have for you Very there, few. they're going to come back i mean you you don't know. I think. I think you got to. Until you know, you got to do both, right? You yeah. got to cover all your bases. Hey guys, on the lawnmower topic, I got me one of those Cub Cadet zero turns with a steering wheel. I can honestly say, I would sell my truck before that mower. Absolutely life changing. Cut my mowing time in half. Let's go, Mountaineers. You were you were the one having the mower issue. Trying to find it. Can't find the zero turn with a wheel with a steering wheel. Yeah, he's trying to find one. I, I, my issue is mine's in my garage with the hood up, waiting for repair. <laughs> Hold the hood, hood up. up. What do you mean hood up? Is it a tractor? Yeah. What kind? John Deere. Oh. Hey, uh, let's talk a little Mountaineer basketball. We'll yeah. go back to text in a second. Yeah. Let's talk about how we handicapped and previewed it, and then what came to reality. Yeah. So that tough loss wasn't it it was a game you, you started off there. blistering hot making shots you're in that game and then it was just down the stretch late you just couldn't buy a bucket and they kept scoring and it's one of those I think that goes down at that's not a bad loss but that could have been a really good win is the way I categorize that like in the Ken Palm rankings West Virginia dropped like two two places so an insignificant loss when it comes to that but man that would have been nice to have that non-conference road game but let's look at a couple things we went through on Thursday hop you ready yep so one of the keys we said were early on this season, teams were having success from three versus Xavier. They were a bottom 50 team nationally in opponent three-point percentage. Tony, what did you see there from three? 
made a bunch of threes. Yes. Could have used a couple more, but made a bunch of threes. West Virginia hit 47% of its three-point shots, well above its season average. Second thing we looked at, West Virginia was putting teams on the line. I think this was especially bing, bing. on the money here. Bottom 20 teams West Virginia is in terms of opponent free throw rate. Xavier shot 30 free throws in the game, made 23 of them, which gave them a plus 12 points just at the free throw line. That was a big difference in the game as well. Talked about Xavier's offense. It had been elite, 15th nationally in offensive efficiency. Could West Virginia slow it down because West Virginia had been top 25 in defensive efficiency? Xavier scored 84 points a season high versus West Virginia, shot nearly 60% from two-point range, 42% from three. They had the best effective field goal percentage of any team West Virginia's placed has faced so far. So the answer was no. They just they were they were relatively level hot throughout the whole game, Terry. Yeah. They just never they never cooled off. Which means West Virginia defended very badly. Didn't defend like it had been so far. So that was a battle of elite offense against an elite defense, at least in terms of the stats. Yeah. That elite offense at Xavier won out by just a little bit at the end. Yeah, I agree. So I uh, totally agree with you that that would have been a good win that would have helped West Virginia's resume big time in March. It's not a killing loss. I also came away with that, reminding myself that we've got nine new bodies running around out there for the first time. These guys mm -hmm. are still learning how to play together. Yeah. And um, it's you just don't have your identified studs yet. We are go to, and we asked that who, who's going to take the shot? The end right? of the game, you need a bucket. Yeah. Where do you go? Yeah, where do you go? And that's still in developmental yeah. mode. Because so there's, there's multiple guys with the skill. It's just who develops yes. and emerges and is comfortable and can be consistent in that role, and that's just going to take some time to work out. Yeah, so now you have four in a row at home starting Wednesday against Navy. So you're 6-2. and two. You'll be 10-2 and two by the time you go back out on the road. And then your first two games in league are at K-State and at Oklahoma State. And in a league in which West Virginia has got to probably go 9-9 nine and nine in conference play, you got to go right from the very beginning of this thing and you got to get W's. So it's on. And we're still waiting on the Jose Perez activation as to when that does come. You know, it's in the hands of the NCAA, as we said. And now, what will he bring to this team? How does that all? mesh together yeah and, I, and and the win is just such a critical part of that I mean we've talked before about what's the NCAA doing with it but it it is an unusual situation in that and, and this is that weird crossover part of the world Hoppy yeah. where we uh, mostly facetiously but some of it's true we say there's no rules right there I mean there's guys going to their seventh school playing for their fifth year and here's a kid that very clearly is able to transfer because his coach left but it is also odd because you haven't seen many of these situations where mm -hmm the semester was already underway. I mean, the yeah, coach yeah. got let go at such an unusual time two weeks before the season that there isn't a lot of precedent for this. So is the NCAA just, are they, what are they doing? Can they just get together and like have a committee of three and best two out of three win? Or I, we, I don't know. I mean, like I, who do you call? We you can't reference back to 1987. When they, I mean, what, do you, what are you doing? NCAA doing? now just says, I, I don't know. We don't make decisions anymore. So I don't know what we do about this. <laughs> Interesting. West Virginia opens with the expansion team at K-State. <laughs> Um, also, I hear in the because uh, they lost all of their guys to the right when right. the coaching change matters. Yeah. What you're yeah. saying there, yeah. yeah. Next was, few days, <laughs> I think next few days we're going to get this football schedule. Oh, really? Yeah, I think that I would be stunned if it's not this week. What are you doing over there? There was like all kinds of commotion. We're just trying to have some... a high level discussion about the yeah, uh, that's fine. Manila folder for Perez sitting in the inbox in Indy. Well, as you well know, this program and stays are still in Indy, right? Yes. And they're still building enough for sale or anything. I mean, it's still offices and <laughs> probably a lot of remote work going on. But not a whole lot of people there, probably. There's a lot of sagebrush like <laughs> blowing down the street in front of the building. As you know, we do accept food items from our wonderful listeners. This one came from Canada, Kitchener, what? Ontario. Huh? Kitchener, Ontario, the same hometown as WV freshman Josiah Davis. I hope you guys enjoy this syrup. I wish you and your family the happiest, the hoppiest of holidays. Your Canadian fan, Matt. It is a great day to be a mountaineer wherever you may be. This oh, is Matt. bourbon barrel-aged maple syrup. Bourbon, bourbon barrel-aged maple syrup from the fine folks at Rock Maple Lodge in Sheffield, Ontario. 
one of the most robust products, premium maple syrup marinated and aged in oak bourbon barrels. Defined by a smooth, mellow whisper of bourbon, the taste is distinctive and impressive, whether enjoyed neat or cascading over a stack of pancakes. <laughs> Classic Canada. Number one export, maple syrup. Well, thank you, awesome. Matt. Turn into oh, a heavy I, maple syrup show. Now, this Now, stuff, do you say it syrup, syrup or, or syrup? syrup? Brad, I think well, you said syrup. I, I, do, I do say syrup because I also say sir, 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 Syracuse, syrup. Oh, so sir, you say no, Syracuse? I say syrup. Syracuse? I got two different pronunciations. S-Y-R goes two different ways for me. <laughs> I don't know that either are proper. Syrup. Syrup? Syrup. Yeah, yeah. What do you say? Syrup. Yeah. Sloppy on my part. Syrup. <laughs> so if you're a longtime listener, about 200 episodes ago, Hoppy brutally, verbally attacked a P1 listener by the name of Garrett Sousen, who he, he and his wife were touring Regretta. New England and looking at the leaves. <laughs> Garrett lives in Alaska. Hoppy, for some reason, castigated them, despite the fact that Hoppy bullied them on the air. Well, I think it was about the leaves. Like Hoppy was yeah, doing why are you coming up there for leaves? Why are you coming West Virginia? West Virginia got, he was coming down to West Virginia. Anyway, despite that, he lives in Alaska. I mean, you weren't part. wrong. You weren't wrong. You were just a little strong on Garrett, who yeah, was a, little bit, a West yeah, Virginia yeah, guy. Yeah, not, not you didn't have, have all the information before I, you started blasting. Right, exactly. That would be very much like me, not like you. <laughs> was, so he lives in Alaska, and he recently came in for a visit to his dad and mom, John. Is wonderful. His dad is John the Architect. You know John the Architect, the guy that did this building, John South. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know him. So he made salmon jerky for us from Alaskan salmon. Oh. Alaskan salmon. And Brad and I have taken a few samples. Would you pass down that to, to the old boy there, it's Hoppy? This is how I describe it. Yeah. It's like salmon pepperoni. Oh. Smoky. It's good. So he made that. I want to get your take. And then he also canned these peppers for us and jams and jellies. Alaskan berries, great peppers. I mean, it's stuff from Alaska. Like he makes, like, beautiful, right? How about that? Very nice. And then, lastly, he gave us Alaska gold nuggets, which are birch cream caramels oh. made with... Alaska birch syrup, <laughs> our second syrup thing. Thank you, Garrett. You're the best. We got more. Uh, we got. What would you think of that? It's pretty good. Pretty, it's pretty good, isn't it? All right. I feel like I should be out in the wilderness. Yeah. You and Burl Ives. <laughs> um, What's that right there? That's the jelly? Jelly's right there. Yeah. You could put that on pancakes, then put the syrup on top of the pancakes, and you're hitting a home run. Long-time listener, first-time texter, I have an idea of how to fix NIL on the portal. The NCAA needs to figure out a way to make a default salary cap. Then each player is only allowed one transfer. If they decide to, they have to before the spring semester starts. I don't know. No rules. I think, John, the problem there, bud, is anytime there's going to be a rule that will limit movement, you're going to get a lawsuit. And I think that's the issue. Hey, three guys, I was listening to the last episode. Hoppy said he got an electric mower, gave it to his wife. I thought to myself, of course Hoppy's making his wife mow the yard because it involves going outside. Huge fan of the show. Keep up the great work. Let's go Mountaineers. Texter, after listening to Thursday's show and spreads considering his options for a North Texas vacancy, I'm wondering if Brad would consider getting his uniform down from the rafters and make a comeback in the new Baker Athletic Department. If he returns, would Brad bring back the mini blimp to fly in the Coliseum, which served <laughs> as a staple under the Catlett Beeline era? I'd love to hear Hugs comment on an indoor blimp. <laughs> Appreciate that. Never say never. Liability issue. Ooh. So never say never. I'm pulling the uniform out of the rafters. I will say this on never. Never again on the blimp under my watch. <laughs> I liked the blimp. Huh? I liked it. it I'm sure you did. And it's a great promotional vehicle. The, no pun intended. The level, the level of stress that was added because of the blimp was not worth the reward, in my, in my opinion. A lot yeah. of stress there, Hoppy. Told that story before. Yeah. Hard to find. It might be easier, though, to find blimp operators now because of the 
proliferation oh, the, of drones. These drone guys, a lot right. of drone guys. So out that there. might that might eliminate some of it. That was a heavy Who, concern. Did you operate it? No. Oh, I had a guy. I had to, I had to go out and get somebody, and that was always a concern. Didn't want to get well, didn't want to get strong armed by the blimp operator asking for more and more. Well, I couldn't make it effective, <laughs> so I can't. I um, can't do that. Can't give you more than the basketball coach. Sorry. <laughs> Threatened to walk. Texter. We are a night for a game. Got to pay a guy $4 billion to fly the inflatable blimp, and the students are trying to hit it. A lot of concern. <laughs> students, students are every to... time that damn thing went up, I was nervous. I had to walk out of the Coliseum. I couldn't look at it. You ever just say to the blimp operator, I'll tell you what, I'm going to park it. I'm not going to fly it. Leave it right over there. Deflate it. Leave it right over no, there. No, happiest moment before one of the seasons, my poor graduate assistant called because he was having over there doing a strategy session, getting the thing up and testing it night for a game. Called in an absolute panic. He was near tears because he thought I was going to go bananas which valid thing blew up blowed up hop really blowed up night for a game like the hint yeah for, just blew up for morrison uh, the, all the humanity, humanity of it all <laughs> i just asked one can it be fixed i i said okay scrap it called the sponsor and said don't worry i'll take care of you we'll do something else oh i'm not gonna repair it done <laughs> kathy from washington west virginia on Hated thursday's podcast you mentioned that prince william and kate were at joe Missoula's game I've attached a video segment from his post-game interview. A reporter asked if he had seen the royal family attending the game, and his response was, uh, basically he said, the only royal family I know is uh, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. <laughs> so, I mean, that's Joe. I mean, he played a deadpan. Like, that's just Joe. He, he was like, they were right there. He likes he to. He likes to. Him. He knew exactly what they were and who they were. And you don't play that stupid game. He was jacking them. You know what? He's he is uh, he's the NBA they're coach off to of, a fast start. He's the NBA coach of the month. Yeah. Texter, since we're in the off season, Hoppy, this is for you. I'd like to ask this question. We often hear West Virginia's got one point eight million people. According to Wikipedia, twenty biggest cities in West Virginia add up to a population of about three hundred fifty five thousand. Twentieth biggest city is Hurricane with six thousand. Where in the world do the remaining one point four five million people come from? Around. <laughs> it's a rural state it's a rural state i mean well, that's good no fine it, that just just that i mean it's a rural state john in phillipsburg new jersey if i'm in charge of scheduling for the big 12 i'm 100 percent scheduling houston at west virginia for dana versus his old team how much pressure would be on brown to win that game and what kind of reaction would fans give dana oh i think i know yeah, I mean, but you know what? Unfortunately, what, what, what I hear is it's going to be the other way around. What a what a great from a fan perspective, from a from a reporting perspective, what a great story! Oh, that'd be fun. I wish I'd do that. Yeah, Wait, we just uh, we might go to Houston. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what's I mean, we have to first go go to Australia and Las Vegas. Yeah, and also that uh, one of those. Uh, Minor league football games in Texas. That was that was Plus on our list too. We got to go to the Apothecary Ale House too. Got, Apothecary. Got an event there. Don't book anything for January six. That's when we're doing our thing. Tulane beat the Big Twelve teams, Cincinnati, Central Florida, and Houston, and the Big Twelve champ K State on the road. How about an invite for the Green Wave? Had a good year. Yeah. Going to play USC. Is that right, Brad? USC. Yeah. 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 Well, Willie Fritz had a good year. Yeah, he did. We had Willie Fritz on the show before, Sportsline. Really? Didn't, he, didn't we play Georgia Southern once? Probably. I yeah, I think up? you might be right. Probably. I feel I like think we've you talked might to be Willie right. Fritz. I think you might be right. Yeah. Uh, Doug writes, with the opening of the portal today, can you all shine a little light on what the rules are supposed to be for the kids in the portal? Undergraduates can transfer once without sitting out. Yes. Do they get another year free? transfer if their coaches leave then if they graduate they get another immediately eligible transfer so among those three options you're right on two they get to they get to go once without sitting out it doesn't matter if they're already in the program if their coach leaves okay now if they graduate then they can pop again without sitting out so, however, let's just say hypothetically a school signs its class in December. Coming up, well, this month. And then they fire the coach afterward, they would let all those kids roll. NCAA would allow that to happen. 
if if it's like Brad says and there are no rules and kids can come and go as they wish, or do we actually have guardrails, maybe very wide guardrails on the portal? Pretty wide, right? Pretty wide. Pretty wide. I mean, I think Perez is the only one that has any guardrails on him. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to track down the rules. Read them. Best of luck. Good luck, dude. You don't want to do that. Who's enforcing the rules? That's that's Nobody. the story. Well, that's the story. It's not what rules are there. It's it's who's enforcing. I mean, have you heard? And maybe there has been. Have have, have you heard a story? That said, well, this guy got in a portal too early, so he can't transfer. Have you heard any stories like that? I've not. Doesn't mean they're not there, but I haven't heard it. West Virginia has had a couple transfers today. Portal today. Reese Reese Smith, okay, is portal bound. Goose Crowder is portal bound. Okay. To no surprise. And I think there will be others. There will be others. I think the over under. Give me an over under. How many guys in the portal center? Uh, I don't know that. I haven't. What? How many did they lose last year? I'd have to do a historical analysis. So I would say that I'd say normally your attrition, this is like 10 years ago, your normal attrition in a program on an annual basis would be somewhere between 10 to 15, probably. You know, those are, that, that includes walk-ons who never had a scholarship. They just come in, give it a try, then they leave. So, I mean, I think it's probably 10-ish, 10, 12, probably. Something like that. Total guess. I know this. We're going to find out real quick because it is on. DJU from Clemson. Quarterback portal. Yeah. Nothing's going to surprise me. Nothing is going to surprise me. Really? Zero. He's an interesting case study in not only portal, but he was he had a national NIL deal with Dr. Pepper. That oh. college football theme thing they do. Yeah, yeah. Didn't go so well, right? He hasn't performed very well. Yeah. So he's in the portal. Yeah. All right. Thursday, we come back. We will recap West Virginia against Navy in that podcast. Plus, uh, by then, we'll have more portal people. No and doubt. maybe, you just don't know, maybe we will finally have the details on our event. Why do you keep looking at me like that? Looking at me You're like... You're going to get another email. You're going to make somebody mad. That's not my goal. My goal is to get this thing going. I think we're going to do it. Three guys before the game brought to us. Pete Thamel. Pete Thamel don't scare me. Pete Thamel. Pete, Pete Thamel lives in your house. I mean, he lives in your brain, doesn't yeah. he? Pete rent, don't bother me. free. Pete, <laughs> Pete don't bother me. I'm good with Pete. I don't know him. I never met him. I just. Oh, I know. Syracuse boy. Is he? Oh, yeah. He's a Syracuse guy. You know how you, <laughs> you, know how you can tell if somebody went to Syracuse? <laughs> how? Don't worry, they'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> it is. It's exactly right. Three oh, guys. it's Syracuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Three guys before the game is brought to you by Comax Business. Ed, were we right or we right? <laughs> Your full service. That's funny. I've never heard that before. You ever heard that? That was no. a good one. Your full service Konica Minolta dealer. Go to Comax <laughs> Business Systems at ComaxWV.com. Three guys also brought to you by the Burdett Camping Center, the only warranty forever RV dealer in all of West Virginia. Visit them at BurdettCamping.com. You know, I was talking to the new AD last night, and he said, uh, so where would you go to school? I said, Syracuse. And he goes, which is a better communication school, Missouri or Syracuse? And I said, well, I mean, obviously I'd be partial on that. And he said, I always mess with Pat Forty and Pete Thamel on that as to uh, which of those two schools, because Forty's a Mizzou guy and obviously Thamel. And I said, we're in, and you haven't met him yet, but don't bring up Thamel's name to Hoppy Kerchival. <laughs> That'll be all also, kinds of problems. Also, that's how, that's how Thamel got it, because he's boys with uh, Hoppy. With uh, Wren. Uh, I don't know, Hop. That's the business. We're back again on Thursday. Thanks for being with us.